It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure, so let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of feel and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. I I shoot shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Welcome back to Note Up North Journal Minicast. Dan's in the cabin with me tonight, and Robin. What is going on, my peeps? Oh, man, I tell you what, another minicast. Some more valuable information you're only going to hear on a minicast, not in our full broadcast. Absolutely. And tonight, we've got Robin online with us, and she is going to be talking about something that's come up in her 4-H group. Is that right, Robin? Yep, absolutely. Okay, Dan? She, she actually put, put the question out on Facebook, needing some help. Robin, go ahead and talk about uh, the the problem that you uh, ran into at at, uh, your class. Um, Well, we have have a new shooter. She's eight. We just had our re-enrollment process, so all of our wait list is gone and cleared, and we have all these new kids in. Um, And she was really having a hard time um, adjusting to the concept of the peep. Um, And so she kept opening both her eyes, and she would, like, point out that she's left-handed, or she's a left-handed shooter. Um... And she kept pointing out that, I know I'm only supposed to be using my left eye, but my right eye won't close. She's like, I keep wanting to look around with it. And Mm. I think because the whole form concept was new to her as well, um, that she was really just trying to, like, visualize herself to make sure that her legs were where they should be, her shoulders were right, and, you know, that that she had everything together. So that's why she was keeping the right eye open. Mm -hmm. But then it was affecting her when she'd shoot because then she was looking more with the wrong eye. Okay, so the the natural inclination people in archery is like wear an eye patch, but there was a problem with that, right? Right. She did not want to be a pirate. That's what she <laughs> said. She's like, I don't want to look like a pirate. She's like, I'm a hunter. I don't want to look like a pirate, and none of the big kids have it. And so I don't I don't want to do it. I want to be shooting at the long distance like the big kids. And we were like, well, that's where I think just a couple weeks with that patch, just to remind you. Once mm-hmm. you get used to it, we'll get it away. But, she, you know, she was, like, real uncomfortable with the idea. And, and I don't want to make her uncomfortable. Right. I want her to enjoy it. So yeah. I was like, what do I do? And so I put it out there. You, um, you actually you actually you know, got some Facebook, good, good responses. Go ahead. You actually got some good responses back, which was kind of nice to see. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I'm friends with, we follow a few different professional 3D um, shooters. And so I tagged some of them, and, you know, I tagged you guys, and I tagged Jim Beasley um, from Spot Shooter, and, you know, all of their friends could see it, and that's who started responding even faster than the people that I knew. I mean, I don't. I think there was only one person I knew that responded out of all those responses. And then you got this great response from, now I'm going to butcher this, uh, is it Hannah Christensen? Yes, I think that's right. Okay, so she made the comment on your post, she makes her, her own handmade eye patches and she's got a picture of herself here with her handmade 
eye patch. Mm -hmm. And she's also the national champion indoor and outdoor master women's compound shooting. There's some credibility. (laughs) At 18 and 50 meters. At 18 and 50 meters. I won't shoot without my eye patch. That's some serious cred right there. <laughs> yeah. I saw that I saw that post and I'm like, all right. Maybe I should wear an iPad. Yeah, I'm like, wow. <laughs> so so with with the information you got back with so many uh good shooters out there who shoot with eye patches, ha- has it resolved itself? Have you made any suggestions to this young lady? Um, I will be this week. We'll have a, diff- a few different options. You know, uh, some people suggested just using um, safety glasses if she didn't already wear safety gla- or if she didn't already wear glasses, and just putting a piece of scotch tape over it so it clouds it but doesn't really take it away. Um, of course, some people were like, she just needs to own it and have it, you know, in that decorative way that she wants it, and that's fine too. Which was kind of our thought process, right on um, of that. But definitely, I mean, it wasn't going to be a long term. I don't think it was going to be a long term, um, like. Uh, Hannah uses, but I think that, you know, we just needed it for a little bit just to get her to stay focused because, I mean, let's face it, she started in our program back in August. She's been going to all our meetings, Mm -hmm. watching us shoot, and sitting on the sidelines, and this was their first night shooting, and she was so excited to be finally doing it. And so I think a lot of it was just that that release of energy of, like, I'm finally here, Mm -hmm. and it's finally my turn. Right. You know, so some of it was probably that, but I think that Again, you know, she's a young shooter, and just that, just that couple weeks of, you know, forcing that eye closed. Do do uh, most of your shooters uh, do they shoot with the eye closed, or do they shoot with both eyes open? Uh, it varies on all of them. Because uh, I was going to say, well, what what would happen if, let's say, next week, all of a sudden she came in, and all the the students who've been there are shooting <laughs> with eye patches? Yeah. Would she, you know, then uh, uh, would she want to feel included with that then, as in support for her? Right, right, and that, and we, and we did definitely talk about that with some of our kids. I think that might put them backwards. Okay, um, but we'll we'll see. We'll we'll definitely um, we're definitely going to talk about that at club and and figure it out to to support her. But you know, as like I told her, I said mine start mine did that for a couple of weeks. She doesn't even remember doing it. She was like, I did. I said, Yep, you did. And when it, the third week came and he said no more, you were like, Huh? Hmm. Okay. You know, does but she wear glasses she now? It. Does she wear glasses now? No. Okay. So I see there's a couple great tips. One was actually putting uh, something on your hat if you wear a hat to make a blinder. Yeah, yeah like a blinder. That'd be kind of cool. Wear a hat, but that way it just comes right off. I like the own the yep. patch thing. That's kind of cool. Of course, that lady who's the champion indoor. Uh, that yeah, whatever she says, do it. <laughs> Right. But I I don't know who was it, but somebody said to use the like the flip up glasses mm-hmm. that yeah she could shoot with it down with it you know blacked out and then when she was done shooting she could flip them up right kind of like the baseball yep. sunglasses right on so no I think that was I think that was great okay another great valuable tool for Facebook you want to talk about instant feedback right on yeah oh it was immediate. We've talked like this uh, before. We've we've seen people in the field who will, who will shoot a deer, and they, they question the shot. They find the arrow, and they're like, they take a picture of the blood on the arrow, and they're like, okay, guys, what do you think? And, and it, instantly, you get everybody chiming in, giving you you know some mostly good advice, but some bad advice. But you have to take it with a grain of salt. But you get this instant feedback of like, okay, you know that looks like good blood, looks like lungs, or no, oh, that looks like liver, or that looks like guts. Yep, you know, so it, it helps. Instant feedback. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. So, well, listen, if anybody out there has had this experience, uh, you know, chime in on our Facebook page and, and leave a, a comment underneath this uh, minicast. That way, uh, Robin can get some information that way as well. So, Or ask a question. If you've got a youngster and, and you're having to go through this, you know, uh, we'd be glad, more than glad to help you out with it. So, uh, anything else, guys? No, I think a great topic by Robin. Okay. All right. Well, Robin, Thank thanks. Thanks for uh, chiming in on this. And uh, if anybody's got any information, you know, feel free to share it. That'll do it for this minicast. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.